Okay, um, what, we, what we're looking at today is, is hydraulics, and there are three sessions. The first one is, uh, is, is basically all the basics, the elementary stuff you need to know when you work on hydraulics. And you've got an assignment to do where you have to change a valve and um, do some fault finding. And uh, you, will need to, you will need to know this stuff. It's very, very important. The other thing as well is, I mean, what I'm teaching you or what I'm talking on today is uh, a lifesaver. Yeah. If um, it's a very, very important session, there are going to be some some images which are quite gory uh, of, you know, when things have gone gone wrong with um, with hydraulics. I'm going to give you a warning before I um, show the image. And um, and if there is um, and I'll also tell you, you know, when the image is gone and you can look again. So it gives you the chance to look away. So it's just to highlight how dangerous hydraulics can be. And normally you think, you know, nothing really explosive. Um, uh, it's a bit of pressure and all that, but normally it's not much which can go wrong. And, and this is sort of a misconception. Uh, hydraulics can be very, very dangerous. And we need to get this out of the way, uh, more possibly more so than pneumatics. Um, but it's, it's very important. Now, the big question is, when are you likely to come across hydraulics in the food industry? Hydraulics is not used, and the reason is if um, some of the oils are toxic, um, there are food safe oils for hydraulic systems, but they are very um, they absorb a lot of water and uh, and they're a bit problematic. So um, hydraulics is not the preferred method for engineering in the food industry, therefore, but you'd still come uh, come across it maybe with forklift trucks or, or a mobile equipment or, or other things, uh, presses maybe. Uh, anyway, we're going to go through it, and um, hopefully by the time we finish today, you've got a good idea of uh, the dangers of hydraulics. And again, I'm going to I'm going to make it quick, short, and sweet. Uh, this is what we're going to cover in this presentation. Um, you are able to identify potential risks and hazards uh, when working with hydraulic systems, so you'll be able to identify those things, and um, you'll you'll be understanding the dangers hydraulics present, and they are real. They're real dangers, and it's uh, when I went through all this stuff, it's quite scary. I didn't think it was quite as bad as what it is, but obviously there are a lot of uh, ways to protect yourself and uh, injuries. They do happen. And um, when you ask around, when I was asking around people who had like colleagues who knew about somebody got injured, uh, uh, pretty much everybody knew somebody who had uh, an injury with hydraulic, uh, an injury uh, working with hydraulics. Okay. Uh, understanding the dangers of hydraulics and knowing the limits of PPE to protect you from injury. So there are definite limits. And again, it's all to do with the pressures you are working with. And um, the actuators, they've got a huge amount of force. And, and also the oil, yeah, which can uh, inject itself into your skin, underneath your skin. And it, it doesn't look bad to start off with, but it's, it's very problematic. Um, you, um, uh, you will be aware of limits to seek treatment. There are time limits as well. So you have to make sure if you get a certain injuries, you have to see. They don't seem serious to start off with. But you have to see treatment straight away, otherwise you uh, you might lose a limb. Um, okay, right. Let's let's move on. Um, first of all, uh, what are the main issues when working with hydraulic systems? Uh, they are pressurized systems, and um, <clears throat> they are moving parts and and actuators. Yeah. So first of all, you're dealing with a lot of pressure, and whenever you've got a lot of pressure, if a system breaks, fails, or whatever, we've got a very basic hydraulic system here. We've got a tank, we've got a pump. Uh, the pump builds up pressure, and it can be a huge amount of pressure. If the pipe bursts, we've got an issue, and then we've got the actuator as well, and even though they are relatively small, they can exert a phenomenal amount of force, and that is the beauty of hydraulics, that you have a fairly small system, and yet you can... Um, you can generate a phenomenal amount of force, and that's the reason why we use them for JCBs, for tractors in agriculture, and um, yeah, in, in engineering and in production as well. Um, so we've got moving parts and actuators. So an actuator is like um, this piston here, or it could be a motor or something like that. And again, they have phenomenal amount of torque and a uh, huge amount of pressure they can exert, and they could crush you to bits. Um, what people very often don't realize is that there's stored energy, uh, like in pipes and accumulators. We're going to look at what an accumulator is in a bit. 
Um, so if a pipe bursts, even though the system is dead, uh, there could be um, quite a lot of stuff coming out of it at high pressure, causing, causing injuries. And then we've got something which is called the oil injection injury caused by a leaky hose or a joint. And, um, and that is a, the tricky one. It doesn't look like nothing when you get it. But um, when, um, when it's happened uh, and you wait a couple of hours, uh, you've got serious problems. Yeah. You, the, the thing is, um, just to sort of zoom in a little bit, we're going to pick it up in a moment again, but um, hydraulic oil is, is toxic, it's highly toxic, and it generates some, it causes something which is called necrosis, which means it, it, it attacks your cells, your body cells, your fat cells, tries to destroy them. And so when uh, oil injects itself into your tissue, you might have just like a needle pricking underneath your skin and it looks like a scratch or something, but oil might be inside your hand, inside your arm, and, um, and it could generate uh, a massive injury, a massive injury, and um, um, it would sort of wander through your arm, through your wrist, and, and within hours, uh, you'll be in agonizing pain, and if it's not seen to in time, and it's not treated, um, it, um, it can lead to amputation, that the only way to stop you from dying is to amputate your, your arm or your hand or something. And it's, it's very, very serious. I, I never realized how bad it was. But again, when you sort of listen around and you talk to people who work with hydraulics, uh, it seems that everybody knows somebody who has had this and um, who has uh, either been very lucky or, or some people, you know, did lose limbs. Uh, there's contaminated oil, which is a big problem for hydraulic equipment as far as maintenance is concerned. Uh, but also there are toxic substances in the oil as well. So the oil itself is toxic and there are toxic sub substances in there. So toxic means it's, it's poisonous. Uh, so these are all, you know, things we have to deal with when we, um, when we look at hydraulics. Okay, next slide. Um, the pressurized system. So the first question is, what is atmospheric pressure? Can you, do you know how much it is in bar or PSI? Just type it in if you if you're listening. Yeah, uh, close. Let's assume it's psi. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, um, in psi, I think it's about fifteen atmospheric pressure. It's a fifteen, and in bar, it's one bar. Yeah, one bar is is the atmospheric pressure. You probably know this when you get like um, 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 what's it called um, barometer. Yeah. And it'll come up with these figures and you know whether you've got nice weather or, or bad weather. And average uh, level of a barometer is one, one bar or 1,000 millibars. That's what they normally come up with. And if it drops a little bit below, like 980 millibars, then it uh, tends to be rainy. If it goes above, uh, like uh, then we've got a low pressure area and below. When it goes above, we've got high pressure area. And then it might be 1,040 millibars or something like that. Yeah. So we... Um, the air pressure changes slightly, goes up or down, and we can predict the weather a little bit. Yeah. Uh, quick question, how many bars do you put in your tire, in your car tires? Or how many PSI? Does anybody know? How many atmospheres do you stick in there? Yeah, 35 PSI, that's a good point. Um, it's about right, yeah. So, um, Depending on what tires you have, um, in mine I put about 2.2 .2 bars, I always use bars. So that's about two times the atmospheric pressure. And, and just to give you an idea how much the pressure is, um, the atmospheric pressure can lift up a column of water to about 10 meters. So if you generate a vacuum, uh, you can suck up water using a vacuum pump to, um, to about 10 meters. And, and that's quite a bit of weight and we don't realize how much um, you know, weight there is on, on us. Okay, um, what else have we got? How much pressure is necessary to cause lethal injury? That's a question. I don't expect you to know the answer, spot on, but what do you think? How much pressure do you need to kill somebody? Or to get killed or to be lethal? I mean, not that you obviously would want to kill somebody, but uh, how much pressure? Any ideas? Is it one atmosphere, two atmospheres, three, four? Georgie, any ideas? Uh, nine atmospheres, okay. Um, yeah, could be. Uh, Georgie, uh, Georgie, nine atmospheres, yeah. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, ten, nine bar is quite dangerous. Most systems, um, 
hydraulic systems, uh, they seem to run at about 10 bar. Yeah? That's the hydraulic pressure. Um, they reckon um, if you use an air rifle um, and they use it for hunting small game, it's got less than one bar. It's got about 0.8 bars. And that's the, the pressure that's inside an air rifle. So it's not that much. Um, a gun, the muzzle pressure is a lot more, obviously. Um, car tire is about 2 bar, 2, two bar, maybe 2.4, 2.3 bars. And, um, and what they reckon is that 3 bars can kill you, 2 bars can give you an injury um, if you are opposed to uh, you know, hydraulic pressure of that and something blasts off under the pressure. It's, it's enough to cause either serious injury or to be, to be potentially lethal. Uh, what is the silent menace? Uh, obviously, the silent menace is uh, you don't hear it. Yeah, that's a problem with um, the, um, you know, if something goes wrong with the hydraulics. Right to the very end when it blows up, it, um, there's no warning. There's nothing there. Yeah, it's a bit like electrics. Um, you, you, you can't feel it and you touch it and it, it gets you. And hydraulic is a similar thing. So if um, just before it breaks down, it, um, it, it can cause serious problem before it breaks down you won't notice it and then it blows up causes a serious problem and it's there when you get oil injection injury the same thing you won't hear it you probably don't even see it it's so fine it's just like a tiny beam you know as thin as a needle um that is that is squirting out the, the hose pipe at high pressure and uh, and you put your hand over it and you get an injection injury yeah, you probably don't even feel it when it happens and this is sort of the um, the menace you're dealing with uh, in hydraulic systems. And the system doesn't even need to work. So you turn off your um, hydraulic system, the robot, the press, the um, the forklift truck, or, or whatever it is. And and the pipes can still be pressurized, or most likely are pressurized. And as you start working on it, um, you might be dealing with a lot of pressure in, in the system. Um, where... In a pressurized system, is the biggest problem or danger? Um, it's a good question. It's um, after the pump. Yeah, uh, you've got the pump in the system. You can see this here. Um, and um, after the pump, you've got the the biggest problem. When you go after all the actuators on the return path to the tank, that's the tank here. Um, the pressure seems to be fairly low, and you don't have uh, that much much danger there as well. Issue of pressure versus flow, I'm just going to talk you through. Um, pressure doesn't mean that any flow is happening, so you can have a fairly short hose pipe and it can be pressurized to 100 bar. And when you when the pressure is released through a leak or something, uh, because there's not much liquid contained in the hose pipe, uh, it, it might not be that dangerous. Yeah? Uh, whereas uh, if uh, you've got like a big system which is pressurized, um, there could be a lot of liquid stored up in it, and so you could generate a flow, and, and that could generate, that could cause a lot of danger. Okay, next slide. I think we've got all the answers here on this slide. Yeah, I don't know whether you can see this. Um, let me just go through this. Yeah, there are all the answers as well. Yeah. Okay, so you've got quite a few um, quite a few answers here, um, which uh, which you can see about pressurized systems and the dangers. I leave it up for, for one more moment. Uh, always remember, if you want to refer back to the presentation, it's going to be on um, um, on YouTube later on when it's done. So I'm recording at the moment. Um, okay. Right, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, hi, Jose. Good to see you on. Yeah, got, you got the email, I'm glad. Uh, I, I think, Jose, it was some, uh, we had a problem with the email system here, that the emails with the link didn't go out. Okay, we're going to look at the first thing. And you see the little uh, bit on there. The next slide, if you are um, a little bit uneasy, a bit squeamish, or you've just eaten, um, the next slide looks quite gory, so just close your eyes. I'll give you the warning when I move over to the to the next slide. Um, oil injection injury, like I mentioned before, is when um, you put your hand over a hose pipe, maybe you try to fix it or something, or you move it along, 
the leak, the hose pipe is pressurized and it starts leaking out. So you get like a very fine spray of, um, of oil coming out. And, uh, and can you see the little injury in the hunt? That, that's, that's what it looks like. It's just a tiny injury, tiny hole. And normally you would think, oh, it's nothing, you know, just put a plaster on it and, uh, and, and, and it'll be right. Um, so, so that's what you would normally do and what you would normally think. But the problem is if it's hydraulic oil, it'll eat up your fat cells and it, it'll attack your body on the inside. And then the worst thing is with your bloodstream, it sort of tries to, to work its way um, down your body and ultimately to your heart. So if you don't get it seen to uh, straight away, um, it, it might result in the amputation of a whole arm. Yeah. Anyway, this is a little bit of a case study. There's a hydraulic uh, injection can be defined as puncturing of the epidermis, epidermis is skin, by a jet of a fluid under pressure. Yeah. This is a 33-year-old male pain spraying after an injection injury. Notice a tiny hole in the palm of his hand, so that's a little hole there, and that's where the injury is. Okay, I'm going to go to the next image. If you, are, uh, if you don't want to look at this, that's fine. Um, it looks quite gory, um, but you get an impression of um, you know, what they had to do to try and you know, clean the hand out. Um, it was seen to. I'm going to show you two of these examples, but it should give you a good idea that, um, that it, is, uh, it is a big problem. Yeah. Um, right, I'm going to go to the next slide and it's coming up and you can see please look away yeah. so on the left hand side you can see what they had to do to the spray painter and uh, they had to open up the hand to, to get all the the stuff out and that is just from an injection injury yeah. uh, i don't know what the aftermath is um yeah it's very vile uh, josh yeah totally agree um uh, that's the aftermath. You can see on on this side here, when you look on the right-hand side, you've got a hydraulic injection injury. Yeah? Okay, again, please look away yeah, if um, you don't like to look at this stuff, but I think it's important. Um, this is 36 hours after, so it probably started off with a tiny hole, um, you know, same same way as a spray painter in his finger, and... Um, and this is after 36 hours. So you probably thought, oh, I'll just put a plaster on it and uh, they, they put it on. Now, these pictures are from the Health and Safety Executive uh, website. So they, they did a case study on this. Now, this is after 56 hours. Yeah? So he realized, you know, the hunt is completely swollen up. It's, it's like a balloon. And uh, they realized, they, or he realized he has to do something about it. He probably went to hospital and they started operating on it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay, you can look for a moment, and then I'm going to go to the to the next slide. Uh, this is just a link uh, where the paper is from, so uh, you can, if you are interested in this, you can read through the whole paper and get an idea of you know how serious this stuff is. And the images were taken from the research paper of the Health and Safety Executive website. Yeah, that's the the link up there. So if you go to uh, later on to YouTube, if you want to take it, just click stop and then type in the link, and you can you can get it. I'm going to move on. Um, please close your eyes again. No, no, it's okay. You can open your eyes. You can, it's not this slide. I think it's a slide after this. Uh, potential progression of oil injection injury. Yeah. So you, um, let's say you've got oil injection in your, in your finger yeah, or you know, near the finger or something. It goes to your wrist within one hour. Yeah. So that means you have to open up your wrist and they have to amputate, not amputate, but... Uh, operate, you know, have do surgery on your wrist to try to get the oil out and to clean it all up. Um, the arm is uh, four hours, yeah, and uh, the shoulder is is eight hours. Yeah. So um, potentially, I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. I mean, you've seen the other guy; um, you'd seen a minute the operation and what is left of his of his hand and his um, his um, uh, his finger, etc. Uh, so it just depends, you know, whether you hit a, a blood vessel and it goes inside a blood vessel and the blood vessel is going to move on the, um, the, the hydraulic oil through the body. And, and, and that is sort of the big problem where, where the injury kicks in, where you, you have to be really, really careful. Okay, please close your eyes. I'm not sure whether that's the next slide. Um, let's have a look. Now you can open the eyes again. It's not the next one, but it's the one after this. That's the, the slide where you see 
what they've done to the guy um, with the oil injection, hydraulic oil injection injury. It's it's quite quite bad. Yeah. Um, okay, an injury, oil injection injury can happen at only six bar. So that's six times the atmospheric pressure. Uh, some people say even below that at three bar uh, can be dangerous. Most hydraulic systems run at 10 bar, but can create pressures of up to 300 bar. So for example, if you've got a pump and you've got some actuators and the actuators go to and fro, you, you've got a close off, a shut off bar. If you shut off uh, the oil flow, but the pump is still operating. So behind the valve, um, the, pressures, the pressure goes up. So the pressure can increase. And depending on the, on the pump, the, the pressure can go up to about um, 300 bars. Yeah? Or there are systems around which operate at 300 bars. Now, 300 bars is, uh, is, is very, very dangerous, obviously, not to be messed about with. Um, the figures I heard, and, and again, um, uh, don't rely on them. So when, if you've got an oil injection injury, um, don't mess about with that. Go to the emergency room as fast as you can um, try and make them aware that it's an oil injection injury and that oil got injected inside your tissue and that they need to operate on it uh, fast yeah. I've, I've been sometimes um, to ENR uh, how many times about three 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 or four times um, and, and it's with serious stuff as well so in one instance um, it was myself and another instance was a friend of mine who had an injury and he was about to lose his finger and nevertheless, he had to wait for about um, uh, three, four hours to be seen to. But, um, but you can't afford this time with an oil injection injury. Yeah. The magic figures are six bar six hours. Yeah, if, uh, if you've, got, you've got six hours time to, to, to deal with it. Uh, if the pressure is higher, obviously the time goes down. Um, I don't know. Get it seen to as fast as possible. Uh, oil causes oil causes ne necrosis and kills the body cells uh, it comes in contact with. Once tissue and cells die off, they become toxic, and if untreated, could lead to death. Often, the only treatment left is amputation if too much time is left. Okay, now for the next slide, close your eyes again. So that's the uh, slide with the um, where you can see what happened to the guy who had the injury, and he waited for 56 hours. Okay, slides coming up now. Okay, you can see on the picture, uh, he has lost one finger. They had to cut off the finger. Uh, he is lucky that he could keep his hand. And, and then notice the scar tissue, which goes from the finger where the oil injection injury occurred. And it goes all the way down to, um, you know, all the way down his, his arm, yeah, his lower arm. I don't know how far, far up it goes. So that means that um, the hydraulic oil has worked its way through his uh, circulatory system and they had to cut it out all the way through yeah. um, and and the issues which which were here is there's too much time passed for treatment to commence uh, you've got the length of the car the the scar across his forearm and hydraulic liquid passed through the tissue further into the body so it worked its way all the way down yeah. and that is sort of the scary thing with oil injection injury when you when you look at that you have to be um a very um what's the term very respectful as far as hydraulic oil is concerned. Yeah. I mean, when I when I saw this first, I came across this. I mean, I've been working with hydraulic systems in the past, and I was never taught this stuff. Yeah, you just didn't you didn't bother. You were just working next to those machines, and if something was broken, you were told to change it. You did, but um, but again, we, we are going back a, a quite a few decades, and, and people just didn't talk about this. Yeah, and when it happened, it sort of maybe hush hush, but then sort of knowing this and asking around, it's it's pretty much everybody I know knows somebody. Who has had uh, who has had uh, some injuries you know, on account of hydraulic systems? To be fair, um, I, I know some people as well. I was just thinking about it. A couple of my friends in Germany. One friend of mine he lost a finger as well, and that was due to a press. It wasn't an oil injection injury, but it was um, um, that uh, a guard didn't work, and the press came down, took off a finger. Yeah. So it's dangerous, very very dangerous, and you have to have respect when you work with this. Okay, next slide. Uh, what's the time? Yeah, we okay. Um, what to do if it happens? Uh, you can look again. Um, feel free to open your eyes. Look at this. Um, often stuff in accident and emergency departments are not aware of the impact an oil injection injury can have. 
All they see is a little hole and a tiny injury. That's all. Um, the wound gets bandaged and the patient is sent home. Yeah. So that's all you see. It's just like a little nick in the skin and they put a maybe um, um, you know some dressing around it and uh, whatever yeah, and send people home. And then it starts getting worse and worse and worse. And when they take the dressing off, it's uh, it's often too late, you know, when, when the pain kicks in. Um, some companies have special cards for injection injury to be passed on to accident and emergency staff. And if you work um, on hydraulic equipment, it might be worthwhile to have a look at... Um, actually, I should have done it for this presentation, but maybe there are some cards on the, on the internet or something which you can just, um, you know, like a credit card, which you can just cut out um, you know, laminate it, put it in your pocket, and if anything ever happens, and you go to hospital and and you are in pain, you don't want to talk too much. You can just give him this card, and you can say this is an oil injection injury. Time is of the essence. If it's not seen to within um, within uh, the briefest of times, it could uh, lead to um, full blown amputation. And and that is again is very important. Uh, you need to insist to get proper treatment as fast as possible. To avoid amputation and potential death, so um, so that that's what we are we are looking at here with with oil injection. How many people died of oil injection? I don't know. I haven't heard of any anybody. Uh, I'm sure the risk is there. I've heard of injuries and amputations, uh, but I haven't heard of anybody actually having died. You know, on a personal level, I'm sure there are some figures somewhere, but I didn't dig them out for this. Okay, there is PPE, personal protective equipment. And the, the big question is simple gloves. Will they work? And the answer is they don't work. I mean, they're good for dermatitis. And, you know, whenever you work with hydraulic systems, um, there's always oil, um, you know, coming off and some leakage and stuff like that. Leakage and seepage. And um, to stop you from getting dermatitis, yeah, that's okay. Uh, simple gloves are enough. So you've got these... Um, these latex gloves which you can put on and uh, and it's fine. Uh, the thing you have to remember though, they don't work for oil injection injury. Yeah? Gloves, are, they don't do anything for oil injection injury. If there's a, a high pressure um, <coughs> jet of oil um, shooting out of a pipe, uh, those gloves won't do a thing. Um, they're certainly better than nothing, but they are no guarantee. No, they are gloves which are advertised to defend against uh, to defend against hydraulic oil injection, but they are not 100% safe. I mean, one thing you always have to bear in mind: your hands may be protected, but there's still your forearm. If your forearm gets in the way, um, the oil injection could just go right through your clothing, uh, into your uh, through your skin, into your tissue. Um, it could uh, go into your face. Could go into your eyes. Uh, it uh, could be anywhere on your body. Yeah? So all you protect is your hands. Yeah? And uh, and then, I mean, there's some up here. Let me just show you with the mouse. Um, these are supposed to, to go up to 700 bar. Yeah? Uh, I guess I would say if they advertise them at 700 bar, um, they're probably a pretty good safe bet on, on low pressurized systems. Um, if you get a... Uh, and, and a jet stream of 700 bar coming out of a pile, that force is phenomenal. It's absolutely incredible. And I'm not sure how good they're going to be, but but still, you know, it's uh, better than nothing. And it's maybe the, the stuff to, to go for. Um, uh, wear protective clothing as, as far as possible. I'm not sure whether there is clothing available that is rated um, against... Uh, in oil injection injury um i haven't seen any i haven't come across any but it's it's a common sense approach if you've got um good clothing and there is you know a pipe bursting and uh, a, a jets um a jet a jet stream of oil comes out you um you've got some some chance of you know minimizing the injury Okay, a lot of it is common sense, but the main thing is just to be aware and treat hydraulics with respect. And when you, you start working, when you see a damaged pipe, you know, the first thing you, you do is you just depressurize the system, get the pressure down to zero, and even then you treat it with utmost respect. You know, make sure that you're not in the way where a jet is likely to come out, but that you keep a safe distance. Okay, uh, go to the next one, next slide. 
what to do depressurize the system before working on it so that's um, that's important uh, be alert at all times when working with hydraulics and uh, I've seen one guy you know when they were just checking hydraulic pipes and sometimes you've got um, you know when you look at agricultural equipment you've got pipes all over the place or JCB there are pipes all over the place so they've got like a long prod like a steel prod and they just um, you know lift up the pipes and see whether there's anything leaking or coming out and uh, they keep a safe distance yeah? and I think that is that is very important in addition to all the the PPE that's available for you to wear and and the biggie is always is to be alert when working with hydraulics uh, ensure as best as possible to have adequate PPE protection so that's your uh, you know your glasses possibly a hard hat as well it's if anything gets on your head it protects it um, you uh, you should have uh, you know reasonable clothing you know that is tight and will protect you from from ingress from oil ingress um, yeah usual stuff yeah um, another one is have your medical advisories at hand so if, if you know hydraulics is part of your your duties I would I would suggest you try to get hold of these cards um, and and have this medical advisory at hand so if you go into uh, a and a and e that um that they know you know what the injury is and that they don't just you know put a little plaster on and send you home with a pat on the shoulder uh only to see you back coming back um uh 20 hours later with your hand blown up like a balloon so um it, it's important to have these medical advisories uh, i would imagine that physicians surgeons say they they are aware of this um of this issue but that um that others may not be uh, uh, like um, you know uh, first aiders and um, nurses and so on they may not be aware of that so just just to be on the safe side okay next slide moving parts and actuators yeah. so that's the next thing the the biggie and as I mentioned before one of my friends he lost a finger because the press came down and his finger was in the way um, so the power is turned off to the press and you need to work on it for example you have to change your valve which you have to do for the assignment and and what are the main issues and the <clears throat> main issues what could happen i mean just let me put out this question for a moment so i can uh let you do the thinking and me do less talking what is the issue here Any ideas? Okay. Um, the first one is that um, if the system is not depressurized, there might be residual pressure left uh, somewhere in the pipe. And as you sort of remove the valve, uh, that pressure might be released and it could um, lead to oil injection injury yeah. or it could also lead to uh, the press in this instance coming down yeah, and being released and uh, causing an injury especially if you are uh, in the way if your hand is in the way or something so there's um, there's a problem to um, uh, to deal with this okay um, couple of questions what actions can you take to be working safely on this press contamination risk as well it's a biggie yeah it's a big one yeah so if the always bear in mind that that uh, hydraulic oil is toxic uh, there might be contaminants in there and uh, if they're exposed to your body you've got a you've got a problem you've got a big problem potentially so um, okay isolate drain before working on it yeah yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Isolate and drain before working on it. It's very, very important. Yeah, uh, You need to depressurize the system. So that's a biggie. And then um, what's the next one? When you look at this press here, what can happen even if it's depressurized? Um, what about the pressing plate? Exactly. It might fall down. Yeah. So the hydraulic oil, you know, in could drop once the pressure is gone yeah a good point might fall could drop once the pressure is gone uh, thanks georgie josh um it's um 
<clears throat> it uh, it can fall down. Yeah. So hydraulic oil keeps plates up. Yeah. So it goes both ways. It can keep the the um, the uh, the pressure plate up, and it can also press it down or make it go down. Yeah? So once you remove the valve, and once the circuit is no longer pressurized, there's a chance that the plate could fall down, and that is again um, a common common injury. And if, as I mentioned before, uh, my friend, I just remembered him um, back in Germany. Him, uh, he, he was working on one of these presses, and that's where he lost his finger. Yeah, and. Um, and obviously, you know, it's a massive injury and it's, you have to, to struggle your life with that when, when this happened. He can be glad that he, he kept his hand and that it was just a finger. Uh, so, right, let's, let's go to the next slide. Um, right, you're working with moving parts. Uh, always depressurize hydraulic system if at all possible be before working on them. Uh, use a relief valve to get rid of residual pressure yeah, if you can. And sometimes systems don't allow you to do this. There are some hose pipes uh, which are um, pressurized, but they're little gadgets, little tools you can use. And you just uh, put them on the hose pipe and you uh, screw them down and, um, and you can use them to depressurize those pipes yeah, in a safe manner. Um, check all gauges and ensure that pressure has been removed. So this is your uh, pressure gauge and they should be all over the system. And that is one um, one indicator to, to realize that the pressure has gone down uh, and bearing in mind that a gauge can fail as well. So look at the gauge before you start working on the, on the machine and, and then uh, if, it, if it shows some pressure and then there's no pressure, it's a good indication that the gauge is, is working. And then obviously take common sense precautions uh, to avoid injury. Uh, don't put your hand underneath the press, etc. And then... Um, Use um, PPE, yeah, which we talked about before. Okay, um, this is the next big um, unit and the next big uh, sort of point of danger, actually point of death. No gory images, so you don't, don't have to worry about it, but that thing is called an accumulator and it's filled up with nitrogen and you've got a little valve here and it, it'll absorb pressure and it's used to keep systems pressurized, even though um, um, you know, you've got maybe valves which open and shut, and uh, as soon as you open a valve and the return path is open, there's gonna be a pressure loss. And, and this accumulator is used to keep these systems at a certain pressure. Um, so um, the problem with them is, and a lot of people don't realize this, uh, they, um, when they have to work or change an accumulator, they shut off the valve uh, which tends to be at the bottom or at the, um, the top of the accumulator, they disconnect it and, uh, and they think everything is done, you know, and, and, and they do this without depressurizing the system first. If then for any reason they um, open the valve, um, there's a huge amount of pressure in them. It's like a, literally like a rocket and uh, and it can cause uh, a huge amount of damage yeah i've heard stories of these things hitting uh, you know people open it up and uh, all the pressure is pretty much released instantly and um, and these things hitting uh, ceilings of factories and uh, again people being seriously injured as well on account of uh, not depressurizing them first before removing them and or they think they can just release the pressure you know when it's you know when they are removed and they open the lever but they don't realize how much it is so again, it's, it's very, very important. Whenever you work with an hydraulic accumulator, they just look like a little, um, yeah, like a, like a bottle or something. They're not very big, they can be very big, but many of them are just sort of tiny units. And, um, and, and again, you know, just make sure they are depressurized. The whole system is depressurized and, and then take them out. Uh, stored energy in accumulators, that's what they look like. You can see that's what they look like for real. They're just little little things. Yeah, it's a little bit of an end cup here. There's some gas, some oil in there. Um, they're used to maintain high pressure in systems, used to absorb excess pressure, can be isolated from the rest of the system. Yeah. Okay. Um, a bit more on accumulators. You can see this here. We've got this diagram here where somebody opens up the valve and uh, 
the pressure is so high that uh, you might you know lose your hand like it's indicated in this animation here um that's again it's another image of an accumulator um issues it can be isolated to not allow the pressure uh start in them to affect the system uh dangerous if worked upon while it's pressurized so there's a little valve down there that one is shut off whilst you disconnect them um they're still under pressure and if you open the valve the pressure is released instantaneously which means um the thing can you know take off like a rocket uh, once removed from the system, they can turn into rockets or missile uh, with a sudden release of force. Yeah, so that's uh, the big problem here. And the next slide, we're almost done. Just a few more slides to go. Uh, injury through leaky, damaged, badly jointed hoses. Okay, I want you to take a little bit of time to look at these hoses here. And uh, let's follow the... Uh, the cursor so you can see here there's some leakage here it's just sort of dribbling out uh, probably not under pressure if it were pressurized it could cause to an oil injection injury uh, let's have a look at this hose pipe down here and uh, most of these hose pipes they've got some um, metal grit inside or metal um, screen inside to give them more strength and uh, to allow the pipes to deal with high pressures. Now, when, when this, this mesh, this wire mesh is broken, uh, you, have, you have big problems. Yeah? And then this can you know, lead to oil injection injury and all sorts of other stuff. Um, what else have you got here? You can see this here. There's some damage up here on that one here. And, and there you can see you've got two pipes. They've been installed, and one of them is badly corroded. Yeah? And, and again, corrosion takes a long time for it to, you know, go all the way through, but it certainly um, impacts the, um, uh, the, the integrity of the material and it could sort of go down. And then down here as well, you see somebody's working on, on systems now just with, with his, his or her bare hands. And, um, and it's again, you know, oil injection injury is just waiting, waiting to happen. So if you ever do anything like that, the best thing you can do is get these gloves, which are rated up to 700 bars or have got an oil injection rating just as a minimum, uh, so, you know, minimum amount of safety for you. You don't want to lose your hand by working on hydraulic equipment. OK, let's go to the next slide. Hydraulic oil and contaminants. Um, one of the things which happens when you deal with uh, hydraulic uh, systems is that contaminants uh, enter into into the oil, and they go down to a couple of micrometers, and they often happen with um, you know wear and tear of the machinery. So little bits of metal come off. Um, oil is quite absorb uh, has has got a high factor of absorption, so it absorbs all sorts of stuff from the atmosphere. Uh, so you can have uh, irritation of your skin when you get this contaminated oil on your on your skin itself. Um, even the oil on its own can can cause um, can cause irritation, and um, and that's something again to be aware of. So I mean the the key is you know make sure you you keep um, your hands washed when you've worked on an hydraulic system. Um, use some barrier cream possibly. Use some uh, minimum is some latex gloves. If you, I, I don't like working with them because I don't feel exactly how what I'm doing. I haven't got a good feeling in my hands, but but um, but oil can be absorbed through the skin as well. So this is not an oil injection injury, but it's potentially uh, causing all sorts of problems, especially if you walk with it um, every day. Um, so ensure adequate protection to cover skin which may be exposed to hydraulic oil. That's really the answer here. Um, okay, uh, we're just at the end. Uh, just a couple of questions. Atmospheric pressure, do you remember? What is it? Yeah, uh, how many bars uh, could potentially be lethal? Bars or PSI? Three, yeah, spot on. Uh, what's the magic rule for injection injury? What, what, what do you have to do? The magic rule, what they say. Six, six and six, yeah, six bar and you've got six hours you know to uh, to get it seen to and treated uh, how long does it take for an oil injection to go from your finger to your arm do you remember that if it's obviously a serious one uh i think it's a bit more uh let's go back i don't, don't remember this. four hours i think yeah yeah 
four hours. Uh, I wasn't sure. I was just about to go back to the slide, but yeah, it's four hours. Uh, what is the ultimate treatment for oil injection injury if not seen to in time? What do they have to do? Um, yeah, obviously death, amputation. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you have to do uh, when replacing a, an accumulator? Very, very important. Whenever you're working on an accumulator, what do you have to make sure? I mean, the normal thing is you have to be very careful. What else? Ideally, sometimes it can't be done. Most of the times it should be possible to do it. What have you got to do when you replace it? Georgie, any ideas? Uh, yeah, isolate and, and depressurize. Yeah, it's very, very important. Yeah, you, you must isolate the, um, the accumulator. Um, when they, if they are pressurized and they're not as part of the system, they are a nightmare. Yeah? Highly dangerous. And the, the problem is you have to get the pressure out some way. How do you do this? Yeah? It's, it's just a nightmare. Yeah? So the, the best way to do it is while they're still in the system, depressurize them. Um, what is the common pressure most hydraulic systems work with? Do you remember how many bars? 10 bar, yeah, spot on. Um, what could happen to actuators if you work with hydraulic systems even though they are dead? So an actuator is like a piston or a, a hydraulic motor or a press or something. They could still fire, yeah. So they could still operate and uh, you could, um, you know, the thing starts moving and it could still do some stuff to you. And, and again, because the pressures are high, um, so um, you're dealing with huge amount of forces you can't you can't resist. Yeah. So basically, if you if you hand your finger, your foot, or whatever is in the way, they're just going to get crushed. And have I got a slide? I think that's it. Uh, we've got some case studies. Let me just go back to the case studies. I'm not going to go through them. I'll um, leave them up for a moment. Um, so there are a couple of case studies. There's a lot of text. Um, if you're interested, uh, it's going to be on YouTube. And when you go there, just click the stop button. And and uh, can you read it all? I think so. I, I can see on the on my screen there's something in the way, but you should be able to um, to read most of it. Um, Right at the end, so it's both about an oil injection inj injury. The supervisor was stunned at the fact that an injury no larger than the size of a pinprick could result in eight months of lost time injury and a bill for approximately $70,000 for hospital and doctor consultations, surgery and exhaustive rehabilitation. Yeah. So that is about um, um, an oil injection injury. And th the story is, you know, he does some stuff, he works on some equipment, he gets an oil injection injury, doesn't think it's serious. And um, and in the end, um, he ends up in hospital. Um, and uh, they, they did surgery on him. Okay, there's another case study. Uh, let's look at that one. Um, I've got the, the link as well where you can get the case studies from. And um, he got a, a, an oil injection injury. Yeah. And it was misdiagnosed by the emergency physician. So that's that's common problem that they don't see the the danger of it. And um, and it was a problem. Yeah. In this instance, uh, again, um, a guy sort of was working on an hydraulic system, and um, um, he never returned to work, and he died ten years later as a result of complications brought about by the injury. Yeah. So even you can have long-term effects as well. So it's it has to be taken with um, with utmost respect to uh, to deal with this, to deal with uh, hydraulic systems. They they because you know people think it's not explosive. It's not like electricity where you get a shock, and um, and so uh, people tend to take it easy, a little bit too easy at times. Okay, conclusion, um, treat hydraulics with respect, ensure to wear proper PPE. Even PPE is not 100% sure and safe. Uh, some of it may work, some of it may not work. It cannot protect you for everything. If you just get an, uh, an oil injection uh, taking place, you know, an oil jet coming out of the pipe, it could hit you anywhere on your body, not necessarily on your hands. And uh, obviously it's, it's hard to protect everything. 
depressurize from working, that's the, the golden rule, depressurize from working on hydraulic systems. Uh, take special care when dealing with accumulators. Again, as there may be stored energy in them and they, they just turn into uh, miniature rockets uh, with a huge amount of power. Um, in case of injury, insist to be seen too fast and uh, for surgery to start immediately because of necrosis. You know, your tissue is dying as you, you know, go to see the doctors. And your body is very tough and can recover uh, an awful lot, but there are limits to it. Yeah. And you don't want to end up with uh, amputation. Always be aware that actuator, actuators in de-energized systems can still move and cause injury. Yeah. So you take your valve out and um, the system is depressurized and uh, the press might fall down or an arm might swing around, uh, whatever it is. So you have to be aware of that. So always keep your, your wits about you. And that's it. Yeah. So thank you very much for, for coming on. Apologies for uh, not getting the emails out in time. Something went wrong with the email system. And I may repeat this session on Monday. I'll see uh, and see what, what can be done. I'll uh, wish you a good weekend and have a great time. Yeah? And see you on Monday, 2 o'clock. It's the next session here as well. Um, we'll be looking at... Um, um, schematic diagrams for hydraulic systems and uh, what's the other one schematic diagrams at hydraulic systems and all the different things we use for a very simple hydraulic system uh, that's going to be on monday okay anyway have a great have a great weekend uh, bye georgie bye josh